Bonjour, it's me again, your international radiographer. I have been getting questions lately on how to register in Alberta as an international medical radiation technologist. So instead of sending them long messages, which is also tiring on my part, I have decided to make a step-by-step -step video out of it. So keep watching this whole video because all information from the start to the end are relevant. Don't forget also to subscribe to my channel, like, and comment if you have any questions. Okay, so to do this, let's go to ACMDTT's website or the Alberta College of Medical Diagnostic and Therapeutic Technologists. You can also type in acmdtt.com in your browser. Now in their homepage, you'll see their logo and who they are. You can also see that they have four specialties which are the Magnetic Resonance Technology, Nuclear Medicine Technology, Radiation Therapy, and Radiological Technology. They also regulate the ENPs, which I'm not going to include in this video because that's not what this is all about. In their website, you can hover your mouse on either the Home, About Us, Applicants, Members, and Complaints, and you can read all of them once you have familiarized yourself with the registration. Right now, let's go back to the Applicant page and point to the mouse again under General Registration, then choose Internationally Educated Applicants. You will now then be routed to the Internationally Educated Applicant page. Now, as what they have mentioned in this page, this is for the IEMRTs and ENPs who wants to be registered in Alberta and are not registered to practice in another Canadian province or territory. If you, however, are already in Canada and are not residing in Alberta but would like to be registered there, you might want to check the Canadian jurisdiction applicants or the non-Alberta and read the step-by-step -step process. Now let's go back to this page and click Registration Pathway for International Educated Applicants. By doing this, it allows you to see the overall picture of the registration starting from the time you submitted your application to the time the college reviews it, then to their decisions and recommendations. You can also see the timelines, the fees, and even your right to appeal should you wish to make an appeal in case you're not satisfied with their decisions towards your application. This is the pathway that you're going to follow. Think of this like a summary because it is sometimes overwhelming to see a lot of information to read and familiarize, so this should lead you to the right route. Once you've gotten the gist of this journey, Go ahead and click the third-party fees for you guys when you apply for the registration. Obviously, these fees are just an estimate, but it is still nice to see that they have put up this information because I remember back then, they were not available yet. So take time to look at them too so you would know that it is not only the registration that takes time to accomplish, but at the same time the fees because as you can see, they are not that cheap. Now, as soon as you're done reading the pathway and the fees, you can go ahead and click the following steps for registration at the college. I bet at this moment you still want to continue, so let's go ahead and click them one by one. The first step is to read the information guide. Yes, you heard it right. You need to do some reading again because unless you'll read, you won't know the process. And if you're not the reader type, I suggest you become one because here in Canada, you have to do things on your own. People will not hand out information to you unless you have questions, and if you're used to the sharing type of people, well here, you will seldom encounter them. So might as well train yourself to do things on your own to manage your expectations. To summarize this part, the first stage is the preparation in which reading the flowchart, the frequently asked questions, the privacy policy, the resources for internationally educated applicants, the English language requirements, and the collecting of the documents. Second stage is the application. This is now the time that you will submit the completed application to them, the documents, and also paying for the fees. And the third stage is the assessment. This is the moment that the committee will review your application and tell you whether you're eligible for registration or you refuse or pending because you may need to attend some courses or take an exam such as the CMRT. In this first step too, you can read information about the timelines of your application so you don't get anxious of when they're going to respond to you. 
Some useful tips about your application also, like the forms and fees, can be found in this page. Um, your professional education, assessment of your academic credentials, professional practice, evidence of professional experience, and even the reference letters. If after reading you still have questions, scroll down to read the frequently asked questions because I'm pretty sure those were already asked by the previous applicants. However, if you can't find the answers, then go ahead and email them about your concerns. This first step may have many pages to read, but it's a worthwhile one. You do not have to read this in one sitting because after all, you are not in a competition with anybody. So take your time. Done reading the information guide and compiling some of the documents? Let's go ahead and go to step 2. Step 2 is all about completing and submitting parts 1, 2, and 4 of your application and paying the fees. What are these parts 1, 2, and 4? These can be found in the Application for Registration Internationally Educated Applicant page. You do not need to submit the Part 3 yet unless of course you have already gotten a decision from them. Until this happens, you can just park this form for the meantime and focus on Parts 1, 2, and 4. So here goes the document checklist and let's slowly get familiarized with them. We start with a specialty-specific self-assessment of practice in which this is a form that you need to fill out. This is a self-assessment tool and has 22 pages and this will help the committee decide with your application later on. You also have the currency of practice form or the number of hours you've worked with your employer and this has to be in their letterhead too. Then there's a specialty specific competency checklist form which is provided by the ACMDTT and I will show later on. The original or notarized transcript of records your credential assessment, the reference letter or reference letters if more than one, and English language assessment. There are also some supporting documents that you need to submit to strengthen your application such as your current resume, your job description from your last employment, evidence of license from your country, standard of practice and code of ethics from your regulating body, curriculum objectives from your program, and CPD. Again, skip first the part 3 and only use that once you have the decision from the committee. Now at this point, you probably are eager to fill out some forms, so here is an easy one for you. Part of your application is to fill out the general demographic information and these includes your personal information, the specialty you chose, the name of your employer and your supervisor, the title of your profession, your school, where you obtained your credentials, then your employment history. The employment history was quite tedious in my part because I had to put the 5 years of my employment, so this part right here is a time-consuming one. The next form you'll fill out is the Currency of Practice form and you can either send this application separately or together with the rest of your application, but I submitted mine with the rest of my documents. Just make sure though that you put the practice hours of your chosen specialty, then you let your supervisor sign them. My tip for you guys with these forms is to fill out while you're still employed with your current and declared employer because once you've resigned from them, it is sometimes difficult to reach out to them to sign it, so better work on this one immediately. Then part 4 is all about payment of your application and your declaration. Make sure you sign this form too and know how you want your fees to be paid online. At the bottom part of this stage too are more explanation of each parts we've mentioned before. So let's say for the general demographic, they explain the purpose of getting your personal information, the specialty you're registering and even your employment outside Canada. If you're curious about how many working hours you need to put in the currency of practice, they also mention it there which is 800 hours for one specialty and 160 hours if more than one specialty. If you are curious about part 3, then go ahead and scan this one. Part 3 can all be worked out once you've completed all the requirements and that includes passing the CAMRT exam and taking some of their online courses. This is now the part that you'll almost be registered. This is also the part that you'll submit your criminal record check, your PLI or professional liability insurance, and REM or Regulation Education module that has 28 multiple choice questions. After this, then congratulations because your name will now be included in the public register list. Now let's go to step 3 which is to submit all applicable documents. So I mentioned in step 2 the specialty specific self-assessment form and this is what you'll fill out. 
just choose your specialty and you can start working in it already. They even provided a sample document on this one. Make sure also that you answer this with all honesty because you will show some proofs to them like certificates for example. If I were you, I'd start working on this one while waiting for the other documents to save your time because this is a long list. Another form is the currency of practice. If you've been employed for quite some time now, then accomplishing the 800 hours should be a piece of cake on your part. And if you also want to pursue a secondary area of practice, let's say MRI in addition to radiological technology, then you only need 160 working hours. Then we go to the specialty specific competency checklist form. Choose your specialty, for example, radiological technology and fill out the form with your supervisor's validation. If you had CT experience in the past, then might as well include that because that will boost your application too. This is why we should never burn bridges with our colleagues or past employment for cases like this. Another document is your transcript of records which is either a notarized one or an original and we all know what this is. There's also the credential assessment. You can choose any of the options they provided and you only need the general one not the one for immigration because that's also different. You also need one reference letter which is the easiest one, then the last is the English language assessment. Just follow the type of English assessment they require because in my part, I just ask a certificate from my school that English was the medium used while I was attending my program with them. So maybe you can also do the same thing from your school. Now you shouldn't just stop from submitting the required documents because even though they are important, the committee would still want to know more of your applications or credentials and etc. So might as well include these supporting documents such as your current CV, your job description from your last employment, copy of your diploma or degree, license from your regulating body, curriculum objectives from your applied program, your CPD, standard of practice, and other documents you would like to submit to support your application. So after step 3, obviously we go to step 4 and this is all about receiving the confirmation and next steps from the college once you've submitted all your completed documents. Here in step 4, they mentioned that the registration committee members are appointed by the council and that they are responsible for considering applications for registration in accordance with the Health Professions Act and the Medical Diagnostic and Therapeutic Technologies Profession Regulation. You can also see here the registration committee submission timelines. Let's say you plan to submit your documents on June 8, 2024, then the committee will meet on February 8, 2024 and they will release the decision as soon as possible by February 16, 2024. So you should ensure to follow this timeline so you have a slight control of your application and so you don't get anxious as to why they respond too long. Now once you've followed step 4, submit all the documents and pay the fees, you just have to wait for their decisions regarding your application. If you have not passed the CAMRT exam, they will send you an email about taking the national exam first and they will also send you a link to their website and guide you somehow with the process. There in the Canadian Association of Medical Radiation Technologists page, you'll see information of how the exam is done, book recommendations, practice tests, and many more. If you however took the exam already, they might want to give you courses to take such as Introduction to Canadian Healthcare, and obviously this is another fee. Only when you've accomplished with what they require from you can you get your license to work in Alberta, so you better choose wisely which province you want to reside so you don't double your expenses. Step 6 is to complete your application. So you've finally passed the national exam like the CMRT and passed the courses required from you. Hey, This will now be the time that you'll carry on with the part 3 of your application that I told you to park first a while ago because that is in step 6. You'll have to obtain an insurance, submit part 3, pay the registration fee, submit a criminal record check, and complete a module. Once everything is done, you'll receive a confirmation from them and you can now start practicing your profession and use your title. Congratulations! After a long and arduous work, you've finally obtained a license to work in Alberta. Now that you already know how to be a medical radiation technologist in Alberta, share this video to others so they will also know the process and can start working on it already. Paalam!